to uh, focus this Sunday night on judgment, on blindness, and on repentance. All that really matters to God is that we get to heaven. Nothing else can be manifested more clearly in the universe than that that's what God's chief objective is, is to get us to heaven. He understands, he has clearly established it and written it in, in his word that we are in a war. That's why none of us should be amazed or baffled uh, because we're in war, because they're coming after us, because the wicked are doing what they're doing. It's like, as I've presented to you before, it's like being prepared for six months in boot camp to go to war. They prepare you for war, being shot at. They prepare you for bombs dropping around you. So anyone who goes through boot camp should not all of a sudden get over in a place of war and go berserk because somebody's actually shooting at me. They've been trained. So is it with the Bible and so is it with the spiritual warfare. We have also been trained by God, told by God, if the gospel is presented properly, if it's presented right, if the gospel is presented in balance, then you know this is not a picnic. Jesus said, I did not come into this world to send peace. It will not be peace until the Lord establishes his kingdom because we let an enemy in the house. It's just that simple. And we were never told by God's word, never told in God's word to be ye good cheerleaders. We was told by God to be good soldiers because this is a war. So we should not be surprised at what's going on around us now in the world and in the United States. Should not be surprised at all. It is a war that we are in. What God is chiefly concerned with is getting us through this war and out of this war and getting us into heaven. But if the situation, if we force his hand and if spiritual blindness comes upon us, it will be because at some point or at one point or the other, God will allow it to happen. In other words, God will give you what you want if you keep asking for it. And when the world don't want to know him, he will finally withdraw himself. A couple of the scriptures that I want to use pertains to gross darkness and blindness, meaning spiritual ignorance. This is the cause of the problem in this war. This is the reason why we find ourselves now losing the war is because of spiritual blindness and what it took to get us to the place of spiritual blindness. It is simply that we have rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected God and progressively gotten worse and worse and worse and generation raising other generations to raise other generations with less and less and less of God or the knowledge of God in their life until finally you come to what the Bible refers to clearly as the Godless generation. The Bible telling us of corrupt parents producing evil children and the evil then progresses to the wicked. The wicked progresses to the abominable until finally because of our slackness, because one generation after the other had less and less God involved in their lives until finally one generation comes along who wants nothing to do with God, nothing of God and don't even know of God. And then God will depart as he has many times throughout history. He will depart. Now, a passage of scripture that is found in the book of Romans, I want to read to you. It's Romans chapter 11 and verse 8. The passage of scripture reads this. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Now, reading that whole chapter, you will see that the Bible here is speaking of Israel. After Israel had had their opportunity to receive Christ and they rejected him. It's what they chose to do and it's what they did. Because they did that, God allowed the enemy of which he had protected them and us from to now spiritually blind them to a place to where slumber, spiritual slumber would come upon the people and a spiritual blindness. 
and they would be destroyed. They would be cast aside. And God would place his blessings upon another in whom was willing to see him, hear him, and walk with him. The Bible tells us of this also in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 16 reads, Give glory to the Lord your God before he calls darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains and while ye look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Gross darkness is not just a darkness. A gross darkness is a darkness so thick you can touch it. God is saying that he will allow and he will turn our light paths to dark. Now the reason for it is, is not that God is hateful or mean or cruel. It is that the only way that we're going to get out of this world and escape an eternal judgment, an eternal wrath, meaning unfit to go to heaven. Promise you, there is a heaven there is a hell. Promise you, you're going to one or the other. If you are rejected from heaven, you are going to hell, period. Forget the sins, forget your particular sins. I won't even bring them up. I'm simply telling you this fact. If you do not go to heaven, you are going to hell because you are a spiritual being and you cannot die. And if you are found unworthy to enter into the kingdom of God, there is only one place left that your eternal self can go. And it will be a place of torment for all eternity. Now the Bible is telling us that God will bring this darkness upon us. Not because God wants to, but because we insist upon it. And when God allows and brings this darkness upon us, it is that we will repent. The hard times, the difficult times, the darkened periods. It's supposed to awaken the conscience inside of a soul. And it will. Except the conscience, as the Bible says, has been seared with a hot iron. In other words, put to death. The conscience. The worst mistake that Satan can ever make, the worst mistake the devil will ever make, is to bring hardship upon a true believer. Left to our own devices, when things start going good and things get well and, and we start doing good, like anyone else of flesh, blood, and bone, we have the tendency to veer a little or get a little laxed. But the worst thing the devil will ever do to a true believer is to bring him into a hard place. Because any and every true believer, when you hit that hard spot, if you hadn't been paying attention to God, you will start paying attention to him. You will come back to him. You will call on him again. And it takes trouble to do that. This is one of the reasons why Sometimes it's not Satan or the devil that brings hardship upon us. Sometimes it is God himself that sends us out into the midst of the storm, as he did the disciples. He sent them out into the midst of what he knew would be a storm, and they rode all night fearing for their lives. And they were sent in that direction by Christ Jesus. That's when he came walking to them on the water. And it is because there was a thing going on in their minds that had to be corrected. They had to be refocused. And it took God taking them through a hard time, allowing hardships to befall them to open their eyes. America right now is in desperate need of repentance. This is the farthest down the track of iniquity that this nation has ever been. Rightfully so, one generation after the other until we have finally gotten here. As I've brought out to you many times before, because of the means of communication that's available today, uh, we have a gazillion more factors involved in the corrupting of ourselves, the taking of our minds off of God, and the destroying of our faith. 
Now, the only thing that is going to happen once a people reaches a particular place, the only thing that can happen to bring them back is pain, represented by darkness, represented by slumber, and the things of which God said he would turn the light into shadows of death. It will take pain. But, now listen, with me, with most of you, it don't take a whole lot of pain for us to get our minds right. When we're off track, it don't take a whole lot of pain because we are aware of God. We are aware of where we are and we know when we're slipping. We know. So it doesn't take a whole lot of pain for us to know that we should call on God. But when you reach a state that America has reached now, the world abroad, but I'm concerned right now with first our own. When you reach a place in a state of which America has reached now, a little bit of pain could not and cannot possibly bring this nation to a national repentance. It's going to take pain but it's going to take a lot of pain, a lot of it, before this generation of young people actually calls on God for help. They're going to have to feel pain that the dope no longer can cure. They're going to have to feel a pain that their marijuana can no longer cure. They're going to have to feel a pain that the pain pills can no longer fix. They're going to have to have a dread and a pain, a sorrow, a darkness, a gross darkness befall them. That is the only possibility of a national repentance. So based upon that, we can be assured by the hand of God whose first and foremost desire is that we make it out of here and make it to heaven. That God is going to visit upon this country. God is going to visit upon this world a hardship such as it has never known. And we are in the beginning days of it now. We're not in the beginning stages of it about to happen now. We are in the stages of it now where it has taken off. It's taken place. And the whole purpose behind it all is to weed out the godless wickedness of this world and to have what will repent and come to the light and come out of its gross darkness to do so. Now, with that said, there's a couple of things that I want to bring nationally to our attention that helps us to see the ignorance and the slumber of which I've been talking about. Now, I told y'all back before the presidential election even took place that the plans of this group of people that call themselves Democrats, that the plan was to have Joe Biden be the one to represent their party. Because of the 19 or 20 that was in there, they were all radical crazies. And they knew they stood no chance against Donald Trump. They were planning to cheat from the beginning. The only one that you could even logically assume could have possibly even beaten Donald Trump would be the only one among those 20 Democrats running for office that they could say was moderate. And of course, that was Joe Biden. The cheat was in. The cheat was already designed. Mr. Biden then would be elected. And I told you, I told y'all that I did not believe from the beginning that Mr. Biden would remain in office for six months. He knows he's not capable. Everybody else knows he's not capable. And his Democratic Party that put him there knows he's not capable. I told y'all that the Democratic Party would use him to get into office. But the one that, wanted, that they wanted to be the president is the one that the Democratic Party would put in as the vice president. That's who they wanted to be the president. They would use Biden for about six months, thereabout. I can't swear on the day or the month. I said six months or less from the beginning that Mr. Biden would either be put out or he would be resigned. He would resign because of health issues or, or whatever the case may be. And the one they wanted then to be president would be president. 
Now, with that said, we have to understand this. The media, the ignorance of the media, because there is no spiritual backdrop. The media gives you news. They tell you what's happening. But at the end of the day, it really is all worthless. We keep watching the news. The news keeps telling us what they're doing, the evidence you have against it. But there is no law. There is no FBI. There is no CIA. There is nobody to do anything about what we are clearly being shown each and every day is wrong in crimes being committed. So we're told what's going on with not a single chance of it being addressed or corrected. Because the people that call them Democrats, themselves Democrats, from the beginning of this country to this present hour, they have systemically ruled it from day one. Go back through history and you will find it. All of the stuff about the blacks and all of the voting issues, none of that ever, ever had anything to do whatsoever with the color of your skin. Never did. It never was about black people. It was about voting people. Once through the welfare system, they hooked the black vote into the Democratic Party. Well, there was no more Ku Klux Klan. They had the blacks where they wanted them, their voting block. Now we see today that the same people are doing exactly the same thing they always did. They are using Antifa to intimidate a communist organization they named Black Lives Matter to intimidate. They are coming after now evangelicals, be they white or black. It does not matter because the evangelical is the block vote against the Democrat. Never was anything a Democrat ever did against the color of anybody's skin. It was to intimidate, scare, and frighten them into voting any other way but what we tell you to vote. And it is exactly what they are doing now with their threats to everyone that does not vote for them. The mistake that the media is making right now, Fox News and all the rest of them, because they do not possess, they do not have any spiritual understanding, they do not even know, and I'm talking about all of the media, they do not know when they're doing the devil's bidding. Now all of the media is coming out and showing how incompetent Biden is, of which we've already known. What they are doing now and what the Democrats are doing and the media that's behind the Democrat is they are now pointing out the flaws and the faults and the incompetence of Mr. Biden. Why? Because they want it to be a smooth legal transfer of power to put in who they wanted. The so-called conservative media having no knowledge or awareness nor injecting God into the issue at all, they do not even realize they are aiding and helping that machine by their constant attacks upon Joe Biden. They don't even know that they're doing it. So that's point number one. Without spiritual understanding, we do nothing but load the devil's gun. The second point I want to bring up to you is that this administration has now opened the floodgates. Less than three months ago, the border was secure. In less than three months now, you're having it overrun with 200,000 people. You remember these Democrats, the ones terrified, wear one mask, two masks, shut everything down. This is a great pandemic, the worst the world has ever known. But of course, it wasn't scary enough for them not to go out and eat in big parties. It wasn't scary enough for Nancy Pelosi to walk without a mask in Chinatown in San Francisco. It wasn't scary enough for Nancy Pelosi to go uh, to a salon when nobody else could. But it was such a terrifying thing. Trump rallies was massive spreaders of the event. Going to football games, going to basketball games, massive spreaders. Now, all of a sudden, the ones that talked that talked shut the world down is now letting 200,000 illegals cross our border every day, hundreds of them with COVID, and the three places in Texas where they're housing them now has had a COVID spike. 
These are the people that won't let us go through the gate of a football game, but will let 200,000 cross our gates a day unchecked. And even when they are checked and found positive, they turn them loose on buses and free airplane rides. And this is that terrible pandemic that shut the world down. You see, if the federal government is allowing now this pandemic, this terrible virus, to freely cross our borders because of their own policies, and it's a fact that's exactly what they're doing because less than three months ago, the borders were shut down and none of this was happening. Then if Mr. Cuomo is being dealt with harshly in New York, because of sending COVID people into nursing homes and thousands dying because of it, then why in the world can't the federal government be held as responsible and even found guilty? Whoever it is you would point to in the federal government with this bureaucracy, why come you cannot bring charges against them for loosening this pandemic upon the people of Texas? putting them on buses and planes and inflicting it upon the rest of the nation. Whoever dies, how many more dies, stir the virus back up so they can shut everything back down. It is this that people cannot see today and it is as clear as the nose that is on our face. And then finally, the last point. The last point deals simply with the fact that there are other viruses waiting. These viruses are held in facilities. They work on them. They play with them. They create them. At any point or at any time that a virus wants, or someone wants to turn a virus loose, they can. The Bible said iniquity and wickedness, gross darkness, Blindness and slumber should befall the people. This wicked bunch has now seen all that we need to do is release a virus and we can control the entire world. We don't have to do it with machine guns, nuclear bombs. All we got to do is release another virus and we can control every move everybody makes. That's what's happening now. And it's brought us to an open shame. I read to you in the book of Psalms too, the Messianic Psalm, where the Bible said the heathen would imagine a vain thing and that the plan would be to remove God and his anointed from our midst. The United Nations is what it was referring to. The Bible also goes on in that chapter and tells us that the Lord will laugh at this bunch and have them in derision. Derision means a language that's almost foreign because it is a muttered slur. Well, that is something Joe Biden is qualified for. He can't string two sentences together. But the fact that we are becoming the laughing stock of this world, and that in less than three months, don't need to be seen by anything more than this. The Bible tells us that from the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks repeatedly over and over and over before the election and now even after the election. Joe Biden has referred to Kamala Harris as the president. Here's before the election. I took it to instill public confidence in the vaccine. President-elect Harris took it, took hers today for the same reason. And here's after the election. Now, when President Harris and I took uh, a virtual tour of a vaccination center in Arizona not long ago. President-elect Harris. Now, when President Harris and I. President-elect Harris. Now, when President Harris and I. Mr. Biden's incompetence makes it impossible for him to guard the lie. And from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mr. Biden knows what the game is and knows that it is, in fact, President 
Harris and not President Biden. He's just too dumb to keep the secret hid. And everyone knows it. That's why they keep him out of the public eye as much as is humanly possible. This is a joke, what's going on in our world today. And trust me, this land is in derision, just as the Word of God said that it would be. And trust me, at this ignorant foolishness that only the blind and those that spiritually slumber could let pass before them, unknown. This is an embarrassment. <laughs>